Hello, today I will be reading to you about Andalusians, from our poultry and all about them, published in 1902 and written by Harrison Weir. Whether this is a distinct breed, as is asserted, or a made fowl by selection, both for comb, form, and color, is very doubtful. In some cases, though not in all, certain breeds of poultry have been named after that of the country from which they were imported, and the Andalusian is one of them. But, whatever the country or locality of the breed, it is simply of a medium color between the Milan and the albino, the same light and dark grays being found amongst nearly all our varieties. These colors were bred as in the old Canton Sussex fowls, from the cuckoo, black, or dark grays, and from black and white Spanish, also in game fowls, polands, langshans, etc., etc., while in animals, the blue tint is easily attainable, as in the tame rabbit, and even in a wild one of a blue fur captured near Lewis, Sussex. Cats, again, are frequently of a blue tint, also dogs, even rats and mice. Therefore, it is but reasonable to suppose that although some Andalusians were imported, still it is but a strain of the ordinary fowl of Andalusia, similar in character and habit to the so-called leghorn and this being so is by no means common to the country to ascertain whether this was so or not i journeyed to andalusia in february of the year eighteen seventy nine and when there made every inquiry respecting the blue variety round about cadiz gibraltar algeciras malaga etc but although i visited several places where choice fowls were kept the so-called andalusian appeared to be quite unknown although blacks whites browns black breasted reds speckles and splashbirds were plentiful, all of which were almost if not entirely identical with the breed known here as Leghorn or Andalusian, with the exception of the coloring. Mr. Leonard Barber imported fowls from Andalusia in 1846 to 1847. Some were evidently Polish and other crosses. He says they, in a few instances, were pure white, and in shape and carriage exactly like the black Spanish, only wanting the white cheek patch. Does this mean the cheek or face of, or the white earlobe, which latter, more or less, all Spanish fowls have? In my opinion, remarks Mr. L. Barber, they are the most useful and ornamental breed of fowls, both for breeder and amateur. The eggs are equal in size and number to those of the black Spanish. Some of mine last year weighed three and some four ounces each. They appear very healthy and hearty. My fowls came from Xerxes de la Frontera in Andalusia, about 25 miles from Cadiz. Some of these birds were of a blue-gray or slaty color. Their growth is so rapid and their eventual size is so large that they are remarkably slow in obtaining their feathers. Although covered with down when first hatched, they look half-naked when half-grown and therefore should be hatched as early in the spring as possible, as is the case with the black Spanish and white Spanish. This description coincides with a class of fowl that I saw in the market at Cadiz in 1879, a few of which were white, others black, but none blue. In 1850-51, to 51, Mr. John Taylor of Cressy House, Shepherd's Bush, imported a dozen or so fowls from Andalusia. A few were black, others speckled, but of the entire number, only three were of the much-coveted blue tint, all more or less for a close resemblance to the already known Menorca or Portugal fowl, as it was sometimes called in North Devon and Cornwall. And it was from these three or four birds that Mr. John Taylor produced what were afterwards described as a pure or distinct race. But of this there are doubts, as they were said to be a cross of what were termed the Manx or Manx blue fowl, a variety now supposed to be extinct. I remember Mr. John Taylor's fowls well, and thought then, as now, that they were simply a selected variety of the ordinary fowl of Andalusia, like the Menorca, Leghorn, and some others. Of course, years of careful selection and breeding make slowly, and, in the end, but not always, surely, a distinctiveness that may be admitted by some of our modern fanciers as indicative of a pure race. The difficulty of maintaining it true in all its points of excellence without sudden and entirely unexpected deviation by reversion somewhat contests this as to being a fact. It is conceded that Mr. John Taylor imported such birds, 
But before that time, blacks and whites had arrived, and in the west of England were kept in quantity, and there is no doubt whatever that these were bred from true blue birds, many of which were incorporated with those of Mr. John Taylor, especially after leaving his possession, and his imports were not by any means of such graceful and elegant proportions as those that have for the time taken such a hold of the Andalusian fancier of today, nor were they so likely to breed true either to color or even the desired form, but it was by Mr. John Taylor uniting the best of his imported with his original stock that the present charming result was subsequently obtained. He first exhibited the breed in London at the Baker Street Show in January 1853 in Class 47 for any other distinct breed. He entered four pens, his first being number two on the list as Andalusians, aged 27 and 15 months. The cock and hen priced 10 pounds 10 shillings. In pen three, the same number, and same ages and price. Then follows an entry, pen four, with white Spanish, exactly the same age as the foregoing Andalusians, aged 27 and 15 months. This is somewhat significant, for at that time the blue color was made by crossing a black and a white, when the outcome would be some blacks, some blues, and some whites. Therefore, is it not reasonable to suppose that all these exhibits being the same age were of the same stock, and each being simply sports? But to continue, the next exhibit of Mr. John Taylor, pen five, is described as speckled Andalusian, seemingly another proof of the instability of the color, now insisted on, and as a separate breed, as a proof of its peculiarity, and it may be added its antiquity. This was a state of fixedness of character in 1853. In the same show, number 41, Mr. Edward Simmons also showed Andalusians, and Mr. J. Whittington of Warwick, and Mr. John Coulter of Bathampton. So, such were not even then uncommon, nor did they vary from many of the old Cornish and Devon blues, with which they were undoubtedly crossed again and again. But this was added, that not only were they more beautiful, but more hardy and better layers than the black and white, and that some of the pullets at a few months old laid eggs that weighed three and a half ounces each, and numbering 120 to 130 in a season. According to Mr. Doyle, the Illustrated Book of Domestic Poultry, page 58, Mr. John Taylor gives the important points of the Andalusian fowl thus, comb, large, erect, and evenly serrated, cheek, white, legs, bluish, plumage, gray, or dove color, each feather being lightly margined with a lighter tint, hackles, glossy velvet black, falling evenly on each side of the breast, in strong contrast to the color of the latter, but full, tail carried very uprightly, with sickle feathers well arched, the hens have the same colors, but pendant combs. This is a true description of Mr. John Taylor's birds. At that time, there was no black lacing either on the breast of the cock or any portion of the hens, they being of an entirely soft blue, a dove tint, or a violet color. The cock was marked in the way of distribution of the black and the blue, exactly the same as the game fowl, red pile, or pied, the blue tint taking the place of the white, and the black that of the red, and thus would be the, a blue-breasted black. Sometimes the hackle of the cock, when the strain was of the right azure color, would instead of black be a rich purple. Where this was so, occasionally a few fawn-colored feathers would appear in the neck hackle. The fact of the feathers being edged with a light straw color led to the attempting and successful production of the black lacing only permanently attained within the last few years. It has been stated that the chickens feathered much more quickly than that of the black, white-faced Spanish. That is so, but not earlier than the Menorca. In point of fact, they are somewhat erratic in this respect, some gaining their plumage much more quickly than others, it being no uncommon thing to see some of a brood almost bare while the rest are well clothed. This was one of the points urged as tending to show that a Spanish cross had been used in the making of the strain. And not only that, but it was an open secret that the beautiful blue old English game fowl, once so plentiful in Devon and Cornwall, was requisitioned to add both grace, color, contour, and hardiness, and that from this cross came a lesser and finer quality of comb. Be this so or not, gradually the breed improved, and was justly and eager they sought for, though more than a little interbreeding was doubtless used, still the result is now satisfactory.